Hey everyone, and welcome back. Where we're talking about navigating midlife metabolism for women. I'm here again with Dr. Laurel, and we had some questions come in, all relating to anxiety. Is anxiety hardwired? Are we predestined to this, and how do we overcome it? And we all know, as women, when estrogen levels change and our hormones change, you know, we start feeling maybe a little bit uneasy or anxious or fatigued or any of these things. And let's talk about that today because it's all okay. There's solutions and strategies for everything. I can attest to that. So Dr. Laurel, I'm going to turn it over to you and maybe you could just get us started with your take on anxiety, what you do with your patients. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this is a, a, I work with a lot of women and I see this issue quite a bit and, you know, there can be multiple factors that we do need to consider. Uh, for instance, I do sometimes look at people's genetics because we can have genetic differences that might predispose us to anxiety. In fact, I have some of these myself. I have genetic variations in uh, COMT, which is one of the genes, some people call it the worrier gene. <laughs> and when we have these genetic variations, okay. we're not breaking down those stress-related chemicals and excitatory neurotransmitters as quickly as other people do. And this doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have a life full of anxiety. And I like to also honor this attribute of ourselves, because I think that there was a reason to have worriers in traditional societies. You know, you think about a small group of people living together, you probably did need some people who are kind of like, now, wait a second. Now, wait a second. Let's think about this. Is this going to be a problem? You know, you probably needed that, that cautious voice. And so there was a role for it that 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 should be honored, and it's not just that it's a a, a genetic mistake. And but fortunately, it doesn't necessarily also doesn't mean that we're gonna uh, lead a little life where we're just constantly fretting. There are things we can do about it. You know, it's interesting. We're born with the need what the the basic need is we have fear no one wants to die no one nothing wants to die not even the insect that's crossing the road everything has this fear and of course that connects into the amygdala of the brain and we've talked we'll talk about that when we talk about hardwired that's why i said hardwired for anxiety we're hardwired for the perceived threat so the the survival mode however and this is what I teach when I work with meditation. Uh, you Once you start changing your perception and you're working more with the frontal cortex rather than the uh, amygdala area in the limbic system, you're able to operate differently. Now that's not to say that we don't have the genetic components that would be heightened for that. And that's where optimal biochemical nutrition, my, my training in nutritional mm -hmm. biochemistry, that's where again, the mind and body are one. So if the body is out of whack or if the body's changing, like with going through the menopausal changes, that's alerting your, your there's an alert that goes on and says, wait a minute, change. If you're overtired and you haven't slept, oh, that's an alert. It's a survival mm -hmm. alert. So that's why we have to work with the mind and body together. You can't just say it's all in the mind, anxiety. Yeah. Anxiety is in the body too, in the gut. We can talk about that. We have so much to talk about with anxiety, of course. And these are all, we can look at ourselves as one biochemical spiritual essence. Mm -hmm. We've created this body. So in any time you're working with anxiety, yes, it is hardwired, but you can rewire it. You know, we can rewire it. That's neuroplasticity as you could talk about if you'd like. And we need to really be, structural about it though. So let's go to what would be, you, you have somebody, you have a patient prone to anxiety, let's just say, and especially during menopause, I think most women are prone to anxiety because the estrogen levels change. 
liver patterns change, we change on our systems of operation. We lose some ability to have a reserve of energy. Once energy goes down, what's the first response? Panic, anxiety. So that's what we have to keep in mind. What is the root, remove the root cause and then restore function. And that's what we, let's talk about that. Let's, I'm gonna turn it over to you and your perspective and how you go about dealing with someone who comes to you and says, hey, Dr. Laurel, I have anxiety. What would you say to them? Right, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to considering genetics and just our natural human nature, you know, as being protectors mm -hmm. and, you know, of ourselves and, and those that we care for, you know, I do also consider past traumatic events that people have been through because that can kind of rewire us and kind of have us in a hyper vigilant mode where you mentioned the amygdala where it might be firing uh too much and and so but the the good news is that as you were saying we have this neuroplasticity this this ability for the brain to change to to know how to work with it on those two levels that you were talking about both on the uh, mental emotional realm of the mind as well as physically nourishing the the brain and the body and when we're doing those two things together we get the most profound results like there that is true yeah. there have been studies showing that people who are going through counseling such as cognitive behavioral therapy where they're trying to rewrite their thoughts that they can actually get better outcomes if they're on a medication. Now, I don't think that we, that means that we need to be taking medications. I think it means that we can wisely use diet and supplements in the same way to be supporting uh, the our neuroplastic potential while we're doing the mind-body work and get the best nourishing outcome for ourselves that way you know i worked in psychiatry for a while and uh, there are times there are times that we need to possibly take medication i'm not one to prescribe or and or even know that but what we do know is just exactly what you said studies have shown with cognitive behavioral therapy you get the best bang for your bucks economically is what changed that where people are just given a prescription and that's it. But it's known that when people are in counseling in groups, the trajectory of that is so much better not to be isolated, just taking uh, something to change your neurochemicals because depression or anxiety or any of these, uh, it's more than just the chemicals in the brain. We know that. Mm -hmm. It's a whole body, and we've talked about this over and over again. It's a whole body, a whole mind, a whole, we're a whole human organism. It's taking into account everything that's going on. It's the vibrational patterns that we create or we bring in. What do we feed our minds with? Not just the essence of food, which is very important, but the essence of thoughts, the essence of experiences, the essence of impressions. So if you're watching the news, I have people turn it off. I just say, please do not put it on, read it maybe, but don't mm -hmm. fill your mind with that because the mind will take it in it, no matter how you cut it, it's taking it in. And it does leave a subtle energy pattern left in the memory. And with mm -hmm. that, that could also contribute to a mindset that has is more anxiety prone. It doesn't mean ignore what's going on in the world, yes. but digest it in a very skillful, mm -hmm. skillful and systematic way. I mean, people, when you get up in the morning and you just flick on news or radio or go to bed with that, that's a real no-no. It actually mm -hmm. will damage the mind field. Remember, your mind is your precious instrument. And mm -hmm. that's the instrument that you have that uh, that energy of your mind is the essence of how you're going to live your life. Yes. No, we're seeing it now in society of anger, animosity, people are fearful. And that 
breeds more because it's in the collective environment of the mind. It's not just our single mind here. We're talking about a collective consciousness that's occurring. And that collectiveness is based on a lot of fear. So what do we do about that? Well, we work with people that can help us restore function by proper diet, uh, mm -hmm. proper stress management techniques, uh, lifestyle changes. Yes. I mean, you do that with your patients. Mm -hmm. Yes, ab absolutely. Like we often talk about uh, the benefits of things like exercise and a healthy diet because it impacts all these levels. So what what my goal is, is to have someone working with someone like you who can help them, uh, you know, turn their mind to more calming, centered thoughts. Well, I will support their brain to have more neuroplasticity. And when we talk about neuroplasticity, what we're talking about is the brain still has the ability to grow new connections between neurons and neurons and essentially be linking new thoughts as we're doing this work on our mind that these new patterns are are actually aligned in the brain. And so we can add things to our life that uh, give the brain what it needs for that rewiring. And it can be some of the things that we're wanting to take for our mental health already. Things like omega-3s and uh, magnesium, not only are they improving brain function and helping us feel calmer, they actually are supporting the ability of the brain to make these growth factors that help us create these new connections between the different neurons. And so you have a good point there. You're not going to be working with the mind without addressing the body. And you're not going to be working with the body. You can, you could start with the body and not work so much with the mind. But once you're working with the mind, you know, people, everyone wants to meditate, but they can't. And they're saying, why is it so difficult? Well, you really need to have a lifestyle that supports, you know, you bring your life into meditation, not the other way around. And so when we work with this and we learn to relax, because a relaxed body and mind is going to choose, and I think you said this in one of our previous episodes, it's going to choose different foods, a different lifestyle. It's going to, mm -hmm. you know, we've all noticed, I noticed if I'm really content and happy, I'm not eating the five cookies, I'll eat one. You know, there's just a difference. And we're working with consciousness at that level. So mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it. We do need, right now, I do believe that people need a multifaceted team to work with, in, even in myself, people that you can really work with that are thinking of the whole of the picture, not just one little data point of anxiety. It's mm -hmm. really looking at it, where you are in your life stage, what's causing the anxiety. And it could be the biochemical, but it could also be the physiological, which creates the biochemical. It could be a faulty gut. Everyone right now has gut issues because the food chain has been very well contaminated. And the what we're putting into our bodies with the water that's been tainted, the soils, and it's not to be negative, but let's look at where we are right now. Let's have a reality check here. And what do we do about that? We start within our own little home. We start cleaning things up. We stop praying, spraying chemicals around. We stop being uh, bacteria phobic because that creates another mm -hmm. whole bunch of problems. We mm -hmm. enjoy our four leggeds as you're doing with your <laughs> wonderful four legged now. We just enjoy life and let's bring the joy back in life. And that joy will override the anxiety because we'll start seeing life in a purposeful way not we're always struggling with what's going on i mean anxiety is real yes. i never knew what it was but when i went through a shift and a change i felt it and i said whoa i i never even knew what that was but you know the liver changes liver becomes a little more stagnant liver is what helps you get through menopause that's why i always tell women who are going through menopause if you're an alcohol drinker stop because the liver's got to do extra work the liver's working with your hormones Mm -hmm. And you know, oh, I might not sound fun and I'm not somebody who's extreme, et cetera, but we have choices. We have to live in reality. Otherwise, reality, I think, is someone has said, reality will come to live with you. 
Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. There's no cutting. Uh, I think it was uh, Dr. Robert Sabota that said that live with reality or reality will come or his mentor <laughs> did that. Reality will come to live with you. Wonderful, wonderful saying. It's a wonderful statement. So that's what I have to say about anxiety. But there is hope, like you said, we could change that trajectory. We don't have to always be anxious, but we all have to be willing to take that step in transformation. We have to be willing to surrender and say, hey, I really want to make that change. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. Just surrender to that. And then the people will show up that you need. Everything will come your way. A book will fall off a shelf. A video will come. Something will come to give you that answer or that it's like they always say, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. You don't have to go out and find your teacher. They find you. You just have to be surrendered to that and know what you want and what are you really seeking in life and not get into that spiral of the nonsense that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just nonsense. And we don't want polarity here. You know, One's not good, one's not bad. It's all in a great, we're all together in this. So that's the way we have to be thinking and just let our anxiety go. We're going to all be okay one way or another. Yes, yes. I think that is the key point that there is a path for us to have a healthier, happier life. I understand that totally. We'll create that path for each other. So everyone, thank you again uh, for the person that a uh, few people that wrote about anxiety. Hopefully we covered some of the concepts that you wanted to hear. And just continue sending us your concerns, questions, maybe a topic you want to hear, and we'll be back. But until next time, as I used to say, remain calm and just enjoy the rest of your summer. Take care.